Okay, welcome back to our PoriScript tutorial series. Um, today we are going to be talking about some basic wild Pokemon and also legendary um, encounter scripts uh, using PoriScript. So, you know, most of the time we have our meta tiles defined and in our engine they, uh, you know, make us find wild Pokemon on random depending on our uh, wild Pokemon tables. There aren't any in Little Root, obviously. Um, but if you want to call a wild battle directly from PoriScript, that is possible. Um, and we are going to learn how to do that today, and we're actually going to attach it to this Kyogre object, just because basically, you know, using a wild Pokemon encounter script is like, is the same thing as a basic legendary script. Now, the game usually handles legendaries a bit differently because they can have a lot of special code. They have their own special intros usually, um, like Kyogre's has water ripple on the screen, uh, you know, things like that. Um, but this is just going to start a basic battle with a Kyogre instead of starting one of those special battles. I will probably go over those later. Um, I will definitely point you in the direction of them in this video how that works near the end of the video if you are interested in that. But uh, it's not going to be covered in this video because this is just going to be a basic Wild Encounters video. And I'm just using a legendary as an example. Um, so we are going to create a normal object and we are going to give it our Kyogre front. Uh, you know, you can give it whatever, um, but this is the sprite that we are going to give our object because I'm just spawning this Kyogre on this little, uh, this little mountain thing that I built here in our previous episodes when we were talking about, uh, you know, our movement permissions. So we are gonna give it movement type none because we don't wanna move we don't want to move it. We're going to give it zero and zero radius. Um, if you wanted it to like stomp around and, uh, you know, approach you um, like a legendary, you would have these triggers and you'd put them down here or wherever. Um, we'll get into triggers in a later video. Um, we haven't covered them yet, but uh, they're, it's, it's very, it's pretty simple. Um, but anyway, um, we are going to just have the, um, the, the legendary up kind of like, you know, how like Moltres the birds are. You just go up and you click on them. Uh, um, so we are going to give it a script that we're going to define in our little root file. And we're going to give it a flag because, you know, we want it to be able to disappear. We don't want it to stay there. We don't want to be able to keep battling it. Um, it's obviously not a trainer, so it doesn't need a sight radius. It doesn't need a trainer type. Um, so that is all that it takes. Um, we should also make note of our object ID is 9, just for later, because we will need to remove it. Um, so we have our Kyogre set up in our overworld. We have our legendary, whichever legendary you want, whatever uh, image you have. Um, so now we need to write the script for it. Um, so it's pretty simple. This is just in our little root script file that we've been working in. Um, we just need these three scripts. Uh, most of the meat is in this one. So uh, this is our Kyogre script that we give to Kyogre. When it starts, we are going to lock everything. Obviously, we don't want to. We don't want to move. We are going to set Kyogre's flag, and we're doing it here uh, on purpose because after the battle, if you lose, if you die, if you wipe out, you white out. Sorry, um, you get taken to your last location, and it doesn't actually run the rest of the code. It ends it. It skips away. If you die, like you don't get to. Uh, you won't get to set the flag afterwards. So we want to do it beforehand because no matter what, after you click on Kyogre, either it runs away or uh, like if you lose, like if you run away, it runs away. If you lose, it runs away. If you win, it obviously disappears. If you catch it, it obviously disappears. Um, and if you lose, it should disappear too. Um, if you don't want it to disappear when it loses, you can move this set flag into our outcomes that we'll talk about later. If you want to be able to re-encounter it if you lose, that is something you can do. You can also just take this out entirely and it'll stay there if for some reason you want to be able to re-catch a legendary, like you want people to be able to get shiny super easily. I don't know, they just reset anyway, so that's not really a thing. But anyway, next we'll move on. We're gonna play Mon Cry. This is gonna play a cry in the overworld. Um, this is just a macro that we can, you know, look at in our event.inc. It just takes a species and a cry mode. Um, for our Kyogre, we are going to want to use cry mode encounter. Uh, uh, this is probably going to be what you're going to want to be using too. 
um, you can copy and paste this into the search bar to see that file, but we're not really going to talk about it because it's not that important. We're going to delay for 40 frames. All that does is just give the cry time to run. We're also going to wait mon cry. Uh, I have this here just because of how it's set up in some of the other uh, legendary scripts in the actual game. I'm not sure if it's optimal or not, but I do it just in case because um, the game did it, so I wanted to make sure to do it the same way. So now here is the meat of our of our um, wild battle. So like setting a trainer, it's pretty simple. It's just a macro that's defined in event.inc where we set up a wild battle and then we run a command to do the wild battle. Um, so first we set it up by giving a species, which is the Pokemon, you know, that we are wanting to encounter. We give it a level and then we give it an item. Because I am using Poke Emerald expansion, uh, I'm giving it the blue orb because it'll mega or it'll primal revert in the Poke Emerald expansion if you have it all set up, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so because of that, but if you don't have the Poke Emerald expansion, you know, you don't have to give it the blue orb. You still can. It'll just be a regular Kyogre, though. It won't be a primal Kyogre. Um, but I think that's cool. So we're going to give it a blue orb. Um, and then we just do do battle. And that's just going to start a battle. It's going to call the game's battle script. It's going to call a regular battle script, though. It's not going to call, uh, like, it's not going to call the legendary battle scripts. It's not going to call, you know, like, the, some of the Elite Four have their own special battle um, scripts that call their own, you know, the battle, the whole battle screen is different, the foreground and everything. This is going to call the regular battle script, and because we're on, we're on, like, rocks in in Pori map like where the Kyogre is it's going to give us rocks as our background it's going to give us the rock background so this just sets a, up a wild battle we can go uh, and look at the macro inside event.inc remember it's in asm macros event.inc if you want to look at it um, it takes a species a level an item you can give it a species to a second level and a second item if you want to do a double battle you can have set wild battle double battles really easily like this and then uh you know you just do wild battle once you're done setting the wild battle it has to be set first um but so with a set wild battle we could have two kyogres if we wanted we could fight kyogre and groudon at the same time um but you know for now obviously we just want uh, the kyogre um so we are only going to give it one set of uh variable or uh, arguments but we could add more if we wanted to um, you, but you need to add all three more if you're going to use all three. Um, so anyway, next, this special var, var result, get battle outcome. I uh, am not sure if now in the current version of Pokemon Emerald Decomposition, if, uh, if get battle outcome automatically puts the result in var result. It's possible, um, but in case it doesn't this is how the game like use how it does it in like if we go to the um this is the uh Rayquaza on top of sky pillar um it uses a special var var result get battle outcome to store the value um so i use it here because that's how the game does it but it's possible it's an unnecessary step and that get battle outcome will just uh put it in var result but if this is best for now. So the special uh, function on its own, there's a special and special var. Special calls functions that we have defined here is just the names of them in specials.inc. Um, and they're functions in C code that we can call from our scripts. And uh, this specific one, get battle outcome, uh, it just gets the outcome of the battle that we just had in C code because it saves uh, the last state, the last battle state. Um, so this is going to get the last battle state and then it's going to save it into var result for us so that we can use conditionals to do different things depending on the battle state. So if we, if we, if that battle outcome was B outcome caught, which is if we caught it, then we're going to call one or caught, which we define down here. If it's B outcome one, we're going to call one or caught down here. If it be outcome ran, we ran away, or if we teleported, then we are going to teleport, or we are going to go down here, and we're going to call ran away script. And uh, else, obviously, we're dead, and it just takes us back to our house. We don't run any scripts at all. And then we are going to wait message, and we are going to release all. 
Um, so that is is the main Kyogre script, and the rest of it is what we do when we, uh, you know, uh, when we are when we win or if we run away. Um, so to start with, um, if we win or well, I'm gonna do run away first because it makes more sense to talk about first. So if we run away, um, it's gonna take us back out into into our little root overworld. We're gonna see Kyogre standing in front of us. It's gonna be there. Um, to make it not be there right away, it is way more complicated and involves the, the more complicated C code, uh, as far as I'm aware. If you are aware of an alternative that's different than what is going to happen here, be sure to leave a comment because I'd like to know. Um, but anyway, um, so the Kyogre is going to be there. It's going to play a cry again just because uh, I, you know, I think it should. It's going to yell at you one more time and say, Kia, whatever Kyogre says. I probably spelled that wrong. I don't really remember exactly what it says, but it says something like that. Um, and then the screen is going to fade. It's going to remove object 9. Remember, I told you to remember the 9 because that is the object ID in Map. It might be a different thing for you. You know, it might be 12, it might be 1, it might be 0, it might be, uh, you know, um, well, obviously there's a limit. I don't want to say a number too high, but uh, um, so we remove the Kyogre object while the screen is black, and then we fade screen, fade from black. Now, there's also fade to white and fade from white. Um, so those are the four options for fade screen, and that just fades the screen in from a script. Um, now, uh, we after we're done, we're just going to roast the player. We're going to say, you are not the Pokemon master, and then we are going to return. Return is how we return to a script. You know, when we call, when we're calling a script, we want to have return at the end because return returns us back. Now we also have go to, which if we go to ran away, it would go to here, and then it wouldn't return us anywhere. We would want an end here because we're going somewhere. We're not planning on, uh, we're not saving our location to go back to. But when we call, we want to return. Uh, so we will do that. Um, and then it'll go down to the bottom. It'll wait message because, you know, we have that message there just in case. And then it'll release all because we don't have the release all here. We have it here. Um, and it does it for both of these. They both return. Uh, now the one or caught is pretty much the same. It's going to just fade the screen. It's going to remove the object. It's going to fade back in and it's going to say you are the Pokemon master and then it's going to return. It's going to wait message. It's going to release all. And that's the whole script pretty much. Um, when we, you know, the flag will be set so um, Kyogre will not be there when we load back into the screen. Um, so we either win uh, or we run away um, or we die. Um, but even no matter what we do, Kyogre will be gone. They won't be there. Um, so we're going to start our ROM because I already have it compiled with this script. I am going to need to pick up a Pokemon and I'm going to have to battle me here as I set this up in our last video. And now we have Kyogre here, you know, and I can walk up to it. I can't walk into it because it's an object, so it has collision. And we're going to click on it. And uh, I'm going really fast so you didn't see it. And obviously you didn't hear it because I have the sound turned off because it would make the recording sound horrible. Um, but it played the sound. Uh, it played Kyogre sound beforehand. Um, so we are just going to take out this Kyogre really quickly. And then... Uh, it disappears. You are the Pokemon Master. Now, if we had lost, which is hard to do when the only Pokemon I can get right now are level 50, because I defined them in our scripts to be level 50, uh, and I could recompile, but I'm not going to. But if we lost, it would do the very th similar thing, but again, it would yell at us one more time, and then it would disappear. Uh, then it would fade away and disappear. Um, uh, I don't particularly like how it looks when you catch it, uh, because if you catch it, it obviously fades away and disappears, but like you should have already caught it. Um, so it's a little more complicated when we get to something like that. And the actual legendary encounters that, uh, uh, you know, use those scripts, they don't use this set wild battle script, not exactly. They use, um, if we go into scripts.inc from this Rayquaza, um, it uses special, because this is in the C code, this special battle setup start legendary battle. And it's, uh, we can call it 
from our C code using the special function um, like we do here with the special var, but we're not trying to get the result of the function back as a variable. So we just use special, we don't use special var. But if we search in our code, um, this is gonna be in battle setup.c. It's not the only place that references it, obviously. It's gonna be in specials. Um, but in battle setup.c, we have this function here, and this is the function. It's a void c function, so it doesn't return anything. Battle setup, start legendary battle. And as you can see here, um, you know, if we look at the overall structure of this, this is a switch statement and it has all the species in it. So it's deciding like, oh, well, what's the species of the legendary? These are our potential legendaries in Emerald. So these are the cases that it has set up. And then it's gonna start a battle task, which is, you know, like a battle, but it's gonna start it with, you know, a specific thing, B transition Rayquaza, B transition Kyogre, B transition Graviton. This is just a blur. Um, and then this is versus legendary versus Deoxys. These are songs. Um, so it's going to use the C code, and this is how our um, our specific macro uh, the the wild Pokemon set wild battle um, that we use the set wild battle, and it's gonna it uses set wild battle too. It uses it first, but our do wild battle do wild battle is when we call the uh, the C code to perform. Uh, to you know, create a battle encounter with the data that we set from set wild battle. So this do wild battle is getting turned into this special battle setup start legendary battle, and uh, that uh, is going to be you know this function here, and it obviously calls multiple functions, and that's you know kind of how our battle engine works is it has a lot more complicated stuff going on in the background. It's not as simple as the little script we get to put. Uh, when we're setting up a basic battle uh, like we did in, in you know our script here. We just set up this basic Kyogre. Um, we don't have to worry about a lot of that more complicated stuff, but when you want to solve some of the bigger problems, when you want to you know get your actual transitions for your legendary specific or you want it to create your own for a legendary, you, uh, you have to start digging a little deeper into the codes, uh, the source of the Emerald code. Um, so this would be a great place to start. I'm obviously not going to cover it in this video because uh, it would take a long time and we're not even there yet in our C videos yet. So I don't want to get ahead of where we are um, in the series uh, because it won't be accessible. Um, so we might get to this eventually. Um, there are a lot more important things to talk about though. Uh, so for now, this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, we have our basic uh, legendary setup and we are going to end the video here um, so if you have any questions just leave a comment um, and I will try to get to them otherwise we will see you on the next video